I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. We're doing some more pit tuning. Can you tell the weather is getting better? It's coming on to spring, and all that flying that I wasn't doing during the winter. Ha! <laughs> now it's like every day. Um, yeah. So uh, this build is the iFlight frame, the iFlight Transframe X5, I think. And it's the one I did with my flight controller, the JBF4. So, uh, and I'm super excited about this build because it has the RCX motors. So the budget motors that I recommend on my Ultimate FPV shopping list. These are the RCX 2306 motors. And after we tune them, we're going to try to use the RCX 2207 motors and see how the quad flies differently. But let's put a tune on the 2306 motors first and let's see how these budget motors, maybe they, I don't know, my tunes have been so easy lately. I don't know what, the let's see if these make it a little harder. Stay tuned. They're looking for a squirrel. There's a squirrel that's sometimes up on the side of the house and they always run over, I, maybe it was there, or maybe they just imagine that it's, now they go to this tree, and they look at this tree to see if the squirrel is in the tree. Where's that squirrel? Where's that squirrel? Huh? Where's that squirrel? Go get it! See? See? <laughs> Here we go. All right, first flight, let's see how she flies. Doing some banking turns, looking for prop wash oscillation. My tuning videos are all kind, kind of the same, just we see how the different quads respond. But my procedure is pretty consistent. Very good prop wash handling. I'm not seeing a lot of prop wash or hearing a lot of prop wash come out. Props are the uh, Dow T5045 uh, Cyclone, three blade. Let's do some sharper turns. Wow, these motors are really impressive. I'm really impressed with these motors. Let me check. Let me check the, uh, heat of the motors. Real quick, let's see if they're hot. Well, they're, they're a little warm. Let's check a few of the other sort of major things that I always check when I am starting a tune. And that is the nose, the nose holding steady and uh, flips and rolls. So let's do some throttle punches and see if the nose holds steady. Pretty good. I'll add some anti-gravity gain just because I always do. And the nose wasn't absolutely rock steady. And let's do some flips and rolls. Yeah, so we're getting a bounce there that we'll need to try and deal with. Yeah. So we'll need to try and deal with that bounce. But honestly, overall, I feel like it's flying pretty good. How are these motors? Uh, how's the amps on these motors? Okay, so we hit 130 amps at full throttle. I saw, maybe went a little higher. I saw that in the OSD. So they are, like I consider peaking around, hold on, let me focus on landing here. We're getting that bounce and tuning that bounce is kinda gonna be the same as before. 
We don't need to worry too much about prop wash, I think. Prop wash is good. Our set point weight is one. Anti-gravity gain is three. Let's bump anti-gravity gain up to five. See if we can steady that nose a little bit. Since the nose wasn't really rock steady to begin with, I'm not sure I'm gonna play with reducing the eye gain like I did, like I sometimes do. Looks like the gyro, oh, wow. Uh, the gyro filters are all active. If the motors are warm with the gyro filters all active, definitely not gonna, yeah, not gonna turn them down. Let's try bumping the P gains um, up and see what that does. So I'm gonna take P from roll from 40 to 50. It's a fairly big jump and pitch from 58 to 70. And let's see what that does to our bounce back on our flips and rolls. I like to get those clean. I don't like to see that. When I'm when I'm watching a pilot and I see bounce back like that, I I, I notice. I don't like to notice. Yep, it's still there, isn't it? I think that increasing P has made it smaller. I think that increasing P has made it smaller. So, gosh, that's an awfully high P gain, though. Let's see what happens if we take it back down. 58 and 40 and let's try to some people suggested I should lower D gains let's try D down to 20 and that's really just a, a really low number for D let's see what happens if we bring D down to 20 people in my last tuning video thought I maybe went the wrong direction so well, okay guys let's let's see what that does now we're gonna take d down p is back where it was now d is at 20. the bounce is still there and how about the prop wash oscillation oh jeez there's more up tilt on this quad than I... Oh, it's still pretty good. But not as good. So I feel like that's made things worse, not better. Well, folks, it's Joshua from the future here to point out something that you guys have probably noticed and you're wondering when I'm going to notice it. It is these um, twitches. They're not even really oscillations. You can really see them as I'm lining up the landing on this tree, just these little tiny twitches that the quadcopter is doing. Uh, go back and look in the video if you didn't see it. Um, and you can see it all that now that I've pointed out, you're going to see it all the time. Anytime the copter's flying straight and I'm not really moving the sticks, it's just these little twitches. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you, I'm not going to notice it. You really can't see it in the FPV feed. And this really calls out the importance of reviewing your high def footage when you're tuning. If you're a racer and you never carry a GoPro and you just don't care what your footage looks like, you only care about your lap times, yeah, who cares? But if you're a freestyle pilot or somebody who's trying to make something that is enjoyable to watch in the high def, you got to review your high def because you just can't see these twitches 
in the FPV feed, certainly not while you're flying and maybe not even because it's so low definition. I am going to go back and I'm going to make a, a sequel to this video and try and solve this issue. Uh, but if, you, if you're wondering when I'm going to notice it and when I'm going to get to it, I'm not. This video just proceeds like all of my other PID tuning videos until I get the best tune out of it. Uh, but that specific problem is going to have to wait till later. Oh, and by the way, wh why? Why is it? Is it the motors? Is it the ESCs? Is it the flight controller? Please don't be the flight controller. I don't know. We're going to have to find out another time. Anyway, I am not cutting this video off, though. We're 15 minutes in, and if you're still watching, I'm still I'm still going. Uh, so we'll, I'm just, just going to let it finish. Enjoy. So I've got a way that I tune, and it's always worth re-examining whether what you're doing is working. I like to tune for sharp stops on flips and rolls, but I kind of wonder whether that is the right thing for this quad. And what I mean by that is that when I increase the P gains and the D gains to try and get the flips and rolls really nice and crisp, um, it feels like I'm pretty sure that the prop wash oscillation got worse uh, in, in cornering. The cornering, the motors don't sound as smooth in the cornering, and there's more cases where we get that shimmy, that prop wash oscillation. And I kind of wonder whether, and practically speaking, you'd be more likely to notice that since, especially the way I fly, you don't see a lot of really sharp stops on flips and rolls. It's not that kind of snappy flying. I'm, I'm more of a smoothie style of flyer. So I kind of want, I'm going to do a pack. I got two packs left. I'm going to do one pack on this tune, and then I'm going to set everything pack to defaults and fly it on the defaults, and we'll see which one we like better. It's up there, doesn't it? And now we're back on the default PIDs, and we're going to see how it flies, see if I actually made it any better. Got to make your mistakes look like they're intentional, kids. I think this is better. You're not seeing... any problems with the flips and rolls. Because I don't do super snappy. But that is so much cleaner with the P-Gains down. Even that where you got a little bit... See, there you'd see it if you were doing a bunch of moves like that.
Oh, uh, eleven. I guess I haven't calibrated the current sensor perfectly, but I think we're getting close to the end of the pack. So that went quick. So I guess here's what I take from this, you know, in conclusion. Um, the turns are way smoother and there's way less prop wash oscillation on the default pids with lower P gains and lower D gains. Um, but if you were doing a lot of really sharp flippy floppy moves, I feel like you might want to clean up the little bit of bounce at the end of those. And it doesn't seem to me, you know, just like you've seen me do tunes sometimes with the right motors and stuff where I get like, you know, four or five packs and the tune is really good. Um, we could keep hacking at this one to try and make it better, but I feel like we're seeing some of the... You all right there, buddy? Where's the squirrel, buddy? Where's the squirrel, buddy? Where is it? I feel like I could keep working at it and probably get a little better, but you've seen me do uh, tunes before where four or five packs in, it's flying really, really good. So I feel like this is a fair comparison and we're seeing some of the limits of the setup. Now, you gotta ask yourself what part of the setup to blame. The Ray 32 ESCs, they're pretty much rock stars. Um, so I think if we have to blame the little bit of difficulty we're having with the tune on something, I think we gotta lay it at the feet of the motors. These are great, great motors, uh, especially for the price. Well, we could always just put different motors on here and see how it flies differently. Maybe we'll do that at some point in the future. The other thing to keep in mind is these motors are getting a little bit warm, even with all of the notch filters active. So I certainly, that may indicate that they have a little bit more propensity for vibration. But we also, I mean, the frame plays into that as well, how flexy or vibration prone the frame is. So I don't think we can draw a hard conclusion. But I can tell you what we are going to do. We are definitely going to put the RCX uh, 2207 motors on this exact frame at some point in the future and fly them and do a comparison. But I'm going to give this guy another, you know, 20 or 30 packs of flying to really get a feel for how these motors perform so that when I put the 2207s on, I'll, I'll have a basis for a comparison. That is going to do it. That is going to do it for this video, though. Thank you guys so much for watching. I got a lot of PID tuning videos. Uh, I have a video, a playlist called Practical PID Tuning, where I tune a whole bunch of quads just like this. Uh, so definitely check that out. It's down in the video description, or I'm going to put a link in the upper right. Ding! There's a card up there. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.